If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, coming about me, uh, I'm Sainath and uh, people call me Ram Saini, it's just weird because you know, right, foreigners cannot pronounce uh, Sainath, so that's why I rename myself as Ram Sain. And uh, I'm having 16 plus years of experience, uh, exclusively in SAP HNS. So initial one year is in SD plus CRM, but after that, it's exclusively in HNS. I worked right from R3 4.7 till HANA 1909. So there is no issue at all. And uh, I understood based on your experience and all, like some of them are working in specific modules. You want to learn the other modules also completely. So this uh, schedule or sessions, we are majorly focusing. So we are going to start these uh, sessions. Uh, I, I believe the lab is also will be provided to you people. So uh, I think uh, you can uh, just discuss with the uh, you can just discuss with the timings of the lab and all. So uh, I'm not sure of that, but uh, it is completely given access for everyone. And this this session we are talking mostly about uh, uh, how how can I put it? Yes, concentrating on product safety related topics, major emphasis because that is where uh, the project is all about. That is what uh, Vikas has uh, intimated me. So uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Vikas. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So it doesn't mean that we are less emphasizing on other topics. There is a cross application component called audit management also. So we are going to learn about everything. So in the logistics EHS, these are the six subtopics. Yes, you are all EHS consultants and you know about these. So there is nothing like that. So we start with industrial hygiene and safety, then go for occupational health. Of course, waste management is not part of the discussion. It was removed from the topic. Then we emphasize more on dangerous goods management, hazardous substance management, product safety. Within product safety, we will emphasize on global label management and substance volume tracking. So this is the way I want to structure my uh, sessions and all. So when we when I say product safety and uh, when I say industrial hygiene and safety, so these topics are interrelated. Like you 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 know right, EHS is not like a standalone. It's like interrelated. So our basic data and tools, the specification as well as phrases, this will be also covered during the discussion of IHS OH. Every module we are going to cover this discussion. So it is not separately taken but taken as a <clears throat> along with the each individual module. This is the way I want to structure myself. After I complete EH and S, then we are going to come for cross application components, audit management. This is the module what we are going to learn and complete it. So after EHS, the final would be audit management to complete it. This structure my sessions. So you can also please uh, Suggest me if you are good enough to go with it or if you want me to maybe change the way or the sequence, I'm okay with it. So please, if you can tell me, that would be great. No, no, no. This is, this is totally fine. We are good to, good to uh, you know, follow this approach. Superb, superb. So, and also when, when I take an example to explain, so which, which is the industry you are comfortable uh, for me to go ahead with it? So chemicals, I believe is good. Okay, great. So chemical industry, yes, let us go ahead with it. Let us start with industrial hygiene and safety. Uh, so can anyone explain me what do you, because some of them are already having experience. Can you explain me what is industrial hygiene and safety and why we need to do it? Any understanding? You're all team members, so there is nothing between you to feel shy, right? Somia, do you want to take it? Okay, in that case, I will rephrase my question. See, we are having two modules. One is industrial hygiene and safety. One is occupational health. Can anyone explain to me what is the difference? A fine line of difference. Maybe from domain side also, people who are from domain who are fresh to EHS also. Forget it is a software. Let us first understand the concept. So, can anyone explain to me what is the difference between industrial hygiene and safety and occupational health and why we need two separate modules for this and what would it cater in the organization uh, in the domain wise what it would cater 
So industrial hygiene and safety, like uh, for any product, like uh, suppose if you want to go for Maggi or anything, there should be some a certain rule, like there should be some hygiene uh, should be like uh, that all maintained, like how how it can be categorized, like for safety purpose also, like whether it should, it should be away from children, there will be some label printing and all that all also covered. Okay, anyone else? Okay, then in that case, what is the yeah. difference uh, between uh, occupational health and IHS? Because yeah, you occupational guys health, the difference. Yeah. Yeah, hi Ram. Occupational health and safety may be used for the uh, to measure the health uh, health measures to the workers and all. Will mm -hmm. be used for the occupational health and safety. And okay. industrial hygiene and safety may be for the uh, to check uh, uh, to check about the incidents and the risk assessment and all those things. Okay. So now let me ask another question. How many of you went any time on site or have you entered the plant location within India? Did anyone go on site or enter the plant location within India? Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. So when you're entering a plant location, what is the first thing uh, for you to get the access to enter the plant? Um, Will there not be a safety induction and training for you without which you cannot give in an access to plant? Yeah, there will be induction, uh, safety induction given by the some of the uh, uh, safety <coughs> officers Sorry. which are who are located uh, at the gate gateway. Yes. So why is that the induction is provided to a consultant? We are IT, right? Why is that it should be provided? At any point of time, did you think about it? Because practically, I'm trying to explain these things. I don't want it to be a theory base. So tomorrow, when you talk to your customer, also it should be more practical oriented. That's why this question is like interactive. So yeah, the person, yeah, yeah, the person who enter into the plant or any site, uh, mm -hmm. they may not familiar about the um, uh, locations and all. So they will explain each and everything about in the induction. Unlike uh, emergency response plans and everything, they will explain in the induction. Correct. Why? It is explained, but why? What is the basis for the person to be explained all those things? There should be some basis, right? Perfect. Why you are explaining it? Because the condition in which they are working could be hazardous. Like if they are working under mines or something, uh, they are working with machineries, they are working with the different equipments which are probably not very uh, safe to work with. So they have different uh, PPE kits and different uh, trainings which they have to go through and have to understand before they start working. And similarly, like you asked for the IH, so <clears throat> it could be that uh, they are working under some severe conditions, so they have to undergo uh, multiple tests uh, before entering the mine and also uh, timely they have to undergo those tests so that uh, uh, they can be uh, like take their medical conditions are also taken into consideration that they Should are not work. exceeding the work. yeah they can because the working conditions can affect them the decibels, uh, the, the uh, amount of noise uh, that they are uh, undergoing for a particular period of time that should not exceed. So all those things, considering all those things, it is very important for a worker to uh, go through the occupational health and industrial hygiene and safety. So. Very good, very good. So yes, as now everyone said, if you look into the ISO standards, earlier it used to be ISO 40, 18,001 and now it is part of 45,000. So every organization irrespective of the industry, whether it is a chemical industry, construction industry, manufacturing industry, safety of the employee is part of the organization. When I say safety, see even in the IT company also, in the TCS also, when you are entering, you have to display your badge. Why? To prove that you are an employee in the organization. So then you are having smoke detectors, you are having fire alarms, you are having fire extinguishers. So what are these? What are these all about? So these are the different tools that will ensure that you are safe in the premises. As simple as that. Are you safe? Are you not safe? Then what is the difference between occupational health and IHS? See, I will. 
whenever a person enters a premises if he wears a helmet that is safety you have to be safe in the premises but if someone comes and checks your temperature if someone comes and checks your health status health reports like we are seeing right covid protocols and all everyone i believe have given a vaccination certificate that is occupational health safety is different occupational health is different with a fine line of difference when i talk about wearing a helmet that is safety when i talk about an injury in spite of wearing a helmet or some illness that is health so an organization can achieve the iso certification if they implement ihs and oh properly in their company okay are we clear or any doubts fine yes, so clear on third second percent so then we are having so because i don't want to stop explain every time so i will be explaining once and then i will start showing the system of course the materials are also available so all the materials are available uh, you can see the materials also the link i will show you how to access the materials after finish this session i can show you that so now work areas what do you mean by work areas any idea place where a worker generally works so they define oh, yeah, the, that place as work area very good in simple languages a place where employee works you are an employee wherever you work is a work area so why ehs team has to define it if you are working in cross functional uh, from cross functional uh, experience like plant maintenance or production planning or something else so you might be understanding each one have their own objects like uh, in plant maintenance or as enterprise asset management you might be having functional locations equipments in production planning you might be having work centers or maybe storage location warehouses everything so each one has their own way of uh, maintaining the information work area is the way in which ehs department maintains it as someone already said the place where employee works so why this definition is important for us because whenever we come into a work area that is the place where safety has to be ensured by the organization so a proper definition of work area is important let us take example of a chemical company let us take example of a chemical or a pharma company where production happens uh, just pardon me guys sometimes I, i'm having cold so just give me uh, excuse me in the middle so why work area definition is important in a chemical or a pharma company see let us take example of um, say novartis or merck or any other company pharma company when you enter a premises you are given all the precautions like i was talking about safety this precautions will be enhanced when you go into the production area or a storage area where you store hazardous chemicals so why a proper definition of work area allows us to identify the risk involved in that area for example in it company what are the risks that are involved in your work location can you tell data me data you might be scared if i say this but uh, yes but tell me what are the risk associated in your work location okay now we are working from home but earlier before covid we used to work from offices right so at the time can you please tell me anyone can you imagine uh, what are the risk associated in our uh, work desk yeah one is electric shock why because we use mostly yeah very good shock. next and air ergonomics also ergonomics also Most good up. very good after that that's all only two economics and electric shock tripping 
due to very good or very good very good tripping because uh, wiring is not done properly on the floor or as you said water is there on the floor tripping and falling down very good then what else okay let me explain lighting because not having proper lights or having the right reflected against the screen also can affect your working capacity correct it has a risk to have a damage to your eye second we are having a disturbance of noise also so too much of people uh, too much of noise also can affect there can be fire hazard you're working but sometimes fire can happen it can start in the canteen or it can start because of a spark short circuit that's also electrical hazard is there correct or wrong so when i identify these risk associated in a work area a small work area like an it where you're not handling any production consider the same in a chemical company where you're handling chemicals on the desk when you are sitting and working if you are having so many risks how about the chemical company or a pharma company or oil and gas company or a construction where when they are handling a chemical when they are handling a, a process how much risk is associated with them correct or wrong so a proper definition of work area will help organization to mitigate the risk associated with it and many of you have worked in product safety glm and all can you explain me what is the specification if you don't mind or someone worked in recipe also can you explain me what is a specification any one of you a uh, specification is nothing but to hold the property of any product okay so like that is what we do in sap okay fine good good anyone else various physical and chemical properties and uh... yes those are the properties we hold whether it is label properties safety related physical chemical yes that is right correct <laughs> anything additional you want to add have any one of you work with this transaction or you work with cg02 only whoever have worked in the specification did you work with this transaction or just cg02 yeah that is uh, the centralized or... yeah that is the centralized specification yes. workbench so, yeah yes. here will be having agent and others also very waste good. board so and others this is what i am expecting okay so if you see when you work in industrial hygiene and safety the data what you are creating is called as agent in the agent workbench the same thing when you are working in hazardous substance management or product safety it is called as substance workbench the same in plm is called as recipe workbench and the same is called as a waste in waste workbench so the data what we are creating relevant for each individual process and dg we are calling it as a dg workbench each individual process you are creating a data repository where you maintain exactly without the need of duplication we are right now doing mdm right master data management all those things but ehs has it long before where in the specification if you open the specification you can see it's a centralized one where it can be creating a dangerous goods class agent waste code packaging information substance and material okay so whatever module you create it it is commonly called as a specification because it is used across various modules with different names just like you take sankranti festival each state a different name it will be called as 
but ultimately it's a harvesting festival just like that each module it might be called a different name but ultimately it is a specification which is a repository to store the information which is used across are we clear please if you have any constructive argument let us discuss i would like to argue Okay, fine. <clears throat> so next, we are having something called as risk associated with it. Can someone explain me? Already, they worked in risk management and uh, IHS also. Can someone explain me what is what do you mean by risk and why we need it in IHS? Can someone explain me? Anyone? Anyone, you already worked in this, right? The risk that is uh, that is present in any work area, and then based on that, uh, whatever uh, safety measures are required. So that is like whatever uh, safety actions are required that is taken into consideration. So this is just uh, uh, to assess the risk in, involved in a particular working uh, area. Okay. Okay. Anyone else want to add any point? Yeah, and risk why we assessment risk will, yeah, risk assessment will be used for to evaluate the risk and to provide the uh, corrective prevention, preventive measures or control measures. Very good. To, uh, yeah. Very good. OK, I will tell you a small example. Risk is something which has a potential to become an incident or accident. That's why a proper risk assessment analysis is important. And we do a risk assessment analysis, we do it for a work area. So ultimately, if you don't define a work area in EHSM, it is called as location, which we are importing it from plant maintenance or manual maintenance, manual creation. But here we call it as work area in updated versions as for hand and all, we call it as location. So concept wise, there may be the naming changes, but it's the same. Risk assessment is done for a location for an agent so that companies can identify what is the potential to become an incident or accident and give a preventive measure small example suppose if you are working in a uh, production environment say for example the pharma or a chemical company because of the machines too much of noise comes and this noise has a chance to affect the hearing capacity of employee so what are the safety measures? They will give you additional earplugs, mufflers to prevent it. So all those things we are maintaining in the system. So we identify the risk for an area and we try to mitigate it, means reduce it. We cannot eliminate it. Remember, when we say mitigate, we can never eliminate the risk. You are driving in a car, you are wearing a seat belt. Even in cities, also you wear a seat belt. Why? Can we anytime go more than 40 in the city or more than 30 in the peak hours? No. Still, you wear a seat belt. Why? There is a risk associated when you are driving. You might be driving properly. Opposite person or other person may not drive properly. So to mitigate a risk, we are not eliminating. If you want to eliminate a risk, you should not drive. You should sit in the home only. But to mitigate the risk, we do an assessment. Try to minimize the impact as much as possible. Please understand this. And next we are having incident and accident here in IHS. So what is the difference between incident or accident guys? Anyone? Anyone, please tell me. <coughs> accident, yeah, accident is unexpected or unplanned event. You can see. So, do we plan an incident? Okay, let the incident happen at this time. Do we plan it? Yeah, no. <laughs> Most people say this, but I will immediately say, incident. Do we plan it? Okay, this is the time. Let us have an incident. Yes. Accident involves uh, injury, uh, uh, but uh, incident might not involve. It could be a near miss. Very good. Excellent. 
always remember all accidents are incidents but all incidents are not accidents example near miss near miss is an incident which can never be an accident and we are talking a physical injury human injury we are not talking about injury to animals or something it is a human injury we are talking about accident involves human injury car goes and hits a tree if someone is there and he is injured that's an accident the brake failed when you are parking it went and hit a tree no one is there that's an incident unexpected unplanned damage can happen production can be stopped both are same only difference is injury so please remember when we say accident it is injury that is the only difference to make it as a accident or incident okay so in short this is what your industrial hygiene and safety is all about now let us come to occupational health so come on now tell me with that experience occupational health i already explained to you what is occupational health so now tell me anyone can throw a light what is an occupational health all about Uh, it's uh, safety and wellness of an employee or a contractor. No, no. Can you please be a bit louder? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's it's about the safety and wellness of an employee or a contractor working at a facility. No, safety we already discussed in IHS safety where we identify the risk and for an agent and then we give a preventive measure to mitigate it. So that is clear. So occupational health. No safety is given to him. Occupational health. uh it's mostly related to the uh, work that an each individual is performing at a facility so depending on the occupations of a person working in a facility at a plant mm -hmm. so related to his occupation you know what he is delivering on whether he's he's uh he's working uh actively on on a equipment you know then uh the the incidents or the accident related to that particular operation comes under that occupational health of that employee Okay. Okay. Anyone want to add any other point? Yes, I'm so taking an example. For example, a person is working under uh, some very severe conditions. So he might, for example, he's working under a, a place where uh, he is uh, hearing a noise continuously for eight hours a day. So he will have to undergo some audiometric test and all. So that mm. all uh, uh, will be taken care of under occupational health, like a duration within which he will have to go undergo all these tests and what all uh, uh, precautions he has to take uh, and what all medications he has to take, uh, what all medical examinations he has to undergo. Uh, so employees uh, basically health uh, checkup will be done will be covered under occupational health and uh, in case good. Uh, <laughs> very good yeah please go ahead sorry sorry very good no problem okay so uh, all that will be covered as part of uh, occupational health wherever uh, his health is concerned and uh, for example, if he is working under a condition where he requests, for example, if we take off the situation right now, like in COVID, so they uh, normally wear a PPE kit. So the use and how they are going to do it, uh, how they are going to use that kit and how they are going to dispose it off. So all that is also all that training is also covered under occupational health only. Um, so what all equipments they are using very and. So very good, all very these good. parts are covered in occupational health. Very good, very good. So, yes, I will ask you one question. Whenever you joined TCS at the time of joining, did you undergo a pre-employment checkup, medical examination that you are fit to work or not? Yes. At any point of time, did anyone consider why you need to undergo that? To confirm that we are medically fit to work uh, in the organization. See, <clears throat> Sorry, always remember whenever you join an organization, it's not only about the safety, it's about the health of the employee also. As you rightly pointed out, if an employee is working in a production area, 
which is highly noise or exposed to fumes chemical and all you are supposed to undergo test every day or within a frequency to ensure your health is not disturbed or damaged or they might alter your shift also all these things you are putting it in the occupational health you are maintaining it in the occupational health module of the system so what we do we maintain the protocols there is something protocol so depending on chemical exposure protocol if it is a chemical company or a general protocol or a audiometer related protocol what is a protocol protocol is nothing but a regulation correct so we maintain protocols depending on the protocols we schedule medical services it can be scheduled or unplanned unplanned in the case of an injury or illness injury will not come right we just discussed accident is unplanned activity so at the time of accident an injury will be there so you never know so that is an unplanned remaining all can be planned where the medical services that are provided to the employee can be planned so when you are planning it it will be a proper like pre employment checkup whenever an employee comes i am planning for it the covid vaccination certificate report that is a planned activity undergo your vaccination submit a covid vaccination report that's a planned activity pre employment check general checks regular checks uh, vaccination status reports all those are planned activities which is based on a protocol why you need to do that to maintain the health of the employee i have to ensure as a company that your health as an employee should be secure and safe the moment you are entering the organization you are my responsibility safety wise health wise so that is the reason occupational health talks about maintaining the health of the employee right from the date of the joining till the date he leaves the organization as per the best practices of that industry we are maintaining it so these two occupational health and industrial hygiene and safety are used in the organization to maintain their iso standards are we clear till this point anyone has any constructive argument shall we talk hello i think we are good ram we can yeah okay good even though we don't do waste management i just want to explain a little bit about waste management and proceed further so what do you mean by waste management anyone can at least by looking into it can someone say this by looking into this can someone throw a light what is a waste management is all about yeah like uh, to, uh, for manufacturing any product like uh, uh, like so, some part of the product like something will be coming under the waste like if we if we are manufacturing any uh, paste or any shampoo or something like there will be some wastage will be out of that so we need to it that okay. all will come under the waste management and there will be cost will also calculated for that for the total overall product of the cost <coughs> oh, okay but but before we go to waste management can you define or tell me what do you mean by waste we all say this is waste this is waste let us throw it away whatever it is but what is a waste like that will not the part what is exactly not used for the manufacture of the product like that. like we have raw material and we have Obviously used the raw material the product the product yeah. which is not useful for the organization is a waste you are a chemical company and you are manufacturing a finished product you combine two raw materials chemical reaction happens a by product will come and a finished product will come by product is not useful for me i am not interested in the by product so that is a waste for me but that might be a raw material for someone else 
how can you say that i will tell you a small example everyone can understand sugar industry you take when the manufacture sugar when they produce sugar what is the output waste molasses but that would be a raw material for alcohol industry construction industry scrap iron all those mangled iron pieces those are waste for the construction industry but that is a raw material for a steel industry so there is nothing like waste waste is something which is not useful for you but might be useful for someone else where you will spend money to dispose it or you will gain money by selling it so we have a tight integration with metal management and also sales and distribution for waste management so are we clear with that yes yes ram yes anyone want to add any point fine so now let us come to dangerous goods and hazardous substance management since some people are already working in it can you tell me what is the difference between a dangerous good and hazardous substance or i can give an example my favorite example always petrol chlorine sulfuric acid petrol chlorine sulfuric acid can you please give me an example which is a danger and which is a hazard petrol chlorine sulfuric acid petrol chlorine sulfuric acid which is a danger which is a hazard uh, transporting of a petrol is a danger mm -hmm. and the uh, storage of uh, sulfuric acid and chlorine is an hazard so pet, uh, chlorine and sulfuric acid are not danger um they are also danger yeah they are also danger like all three are danger but uh, hazardous substances like when you are storing it might create an a chemical reaction like when perfect you perfect to, see to the name itself said, the name itself said excellent the name itself says see goods when do you call a good dangerous goods when do you call it as a good tell me when you're transporting when you're storing you don't call it as a goods right only when you transport you call it as a goods if you're storing it that's a stock only right <clears throat> so at the time of transportation see the same chemical whatever you are transporting it is following a dangerous goods regulation there are different regulations across the globe if you go for europe they have their own regulations if you go for north america they have their own latin america they have their own asia pacific they have their own so our dangerous goods management handles multiple regulations a product has to undergo and this information is passed on to the sd model we call it as otc it will be passed on to the otc where the order can get blocked or passed depending on the settings maintained in the ehns are we clear the same material when you are in storage it is called as a hazard example so in, in, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so in that case like petrol cocaine and uh, sulfuric acid both are dangerous good and both are hazardous or yes. all three are hazardous. yes absolutely depending on the situation it is hazard or danger i will give you an example okay in the petrol bunk when we are filling petrol can you take your mobile and talk it inside the petrol bunk no but same mobile are the people who are delivering swiggy or whatever it is are they not putting on the tank of the bike to see okay. the direction yeah they are put and also the petrol tanker okay the swiggy guy is a small tank 11 liters of petrol that's okay the fellow who is getting the tanker right Yes. he also keeps on talking the phone saying that okay i reached the outskirts or i will be half a day delay because of traffic so he's carrying a tanker of petrol but still yeah he's talking is he not talking on the phone yes 
so why he is talking on the phone when it is prevented in the petrol bunk because in petrol bunk it is a hazard it is in storage my hazard regulations are different in dangerous goods transportation my dg regulations are different so that is the reason each chemical i am not talking only about these three petrol chlorine or sulfuric acid any chemical any chemical is a dangerous goods when you are transporting is a hazard when you are storing in my hazard is substance management majorly with warehouse management or storage locations of mm because i talk about hazard are we good are in doubt we are good ram anyone else can point out if you want to have any discussion we can have it please feel free because i want it to be more interactive <coughs> anyone can add any point No one, no one to add any more point. Someone already worked in dangerous goods, right? So you can add any point. What is that you faced in dangerous goods, so that we can discuss it and move to the next one. Okay. so now guys tell me what do you mean by product safety <clears throat> what do you mean by svd what do you mean by glm any one of you who already working in product safety hello am i am i audible is my yes ram you are audible okay hello yeah can someone explain me what do you mean by product safety substance volume tracking and glm like uh, product safety means like there will be uh, for any product like what all safety measure we are following and uh, to manufacture the product to complete the product like what all safety measure and then again glm will be the label related what all what like uh, what what type of label we need to print out print for the particular product like that can be uh, yeah that's all oh, yes ram so what is svd then uh, yes. we have something called as substance volume tracking also yes it de depends on the country's needs right i mean which which all countries you know based on which all regulations can consume or produce or uh, Uh, you know, export or import, you know, those products, right? So there has to be a certain volume beyond which you know the companies or the countries are not allowed to produce or export or import, you know, those those products. Okay. <clears throat> so to to keep a track of those things, right? So that you know they are not uh, exceeding those limits, the SVT is required. Okay. Okay. Anyone else want to add a point for that?
statement of spt no country say that you have to produce less quantity no country says that as a organization we give the information to the country or the regulatory body i am producing 10000 tons 100000 tons 1 million tons or 1 billion tons and for that i will pay a fees to the country regulatory body so that svt tracks that i should not exceed the quantity for what i agreed to pay for it i will give a small example petrochemical products do we not agree that petrol is the reason for global warming everyone agrees correct can you restrict either reliance industries or ongc or maybe indian oil you have you should not pet, produce petrol beyond certain quantity no right in a similar way what is product safety still i did not get an answer for that So I think any any company you know which is manufacturing any certain product right. So first of all, the product safety will only be used in the uh, in the manufacturing companies right where they are manufacturing something, manufacturing a product right. And how safe is that product with respect to you know all the parameters you know maybe transportation maybe manufacturing you know the the conditions in which it is manufactured and the circumstances in which it is being used. So that that's where you know the product safety is concerned. Very good, very very good. in a simple way i will give you a small example or a statement i would always give a statement to product safety as how safe is a person when handling a product and how safe is the product when being handled by the person for example during the petrol manufacturing or any chemical manufacturing which is highly volatile can you just start smoking beside that particular product or lighting a lighter or do a puja with agarbatti you can't do that right correct or wrong but who is saying that you are not supposed to smoke or you are not supposed to uh, light a lighter or a matches near that a label says that so how the label is being printed because of the information stored in the repository of a specification under product safety correct or wrong yes i am ensuring the product is safe how i am ensuring by printing a label by printing a document how to use it a manual or what precautions needs to be taken when i am shipping it automatic repeat shipment along with sales order correct or wrong so always remember product safety is a repository to store the information and to print the data in the respective formats it can be a label as in glm it can be a trem card that is used in dangerous goods management it can be a safety data sheet or a material safety data sheet does anyone want to add any additional point uh ram uh, hi tarun here i was still yeah, thinking I mean. about the point that you made about the substance volume tracking uh mm -hmm. 
so what you said about uh, you know how we can uh, produce as much as in uh, millions and billions you know as much we pay the country mm -hmm. uh, pardon me if i am wrong here ram but what i have learned you know working while working in uh, chemical industry it's just not the payment uh, that can justify how much uh, substance or material you can produce i think there are various factors and for example a typical uh, example that i have heard i, I i'm sure you know I, i might be missing something here but uh, chlorofluorocarbons right there is a specific limit that have uh, that have been created you know that you some of the countries they have already uh, they have already banned this material you know for the refrigeration but some of the countries which are still producing there is a limit that they can produce and they can't go beyond that limit so is it not covered under substance volume limit tracking that produces, there is a limit that it produces to be used under it country it can export the additional one right yeah right it can export the additional so here when you are talking about production you are not stopping the production the consumption within the country which is determined by other things other than ehns but production is not going to stop i will tell you an example methyl isocyanate that is the main reason for bhopal gas tragedy in india right in the globe there is only one company which is allowed to manufacture and there is only one company which is allowed to market it sadara is the company which manufactures it dow is the company which markets it they call it as first market area right okay there is no limit because methyl isocyanate is needed for various applications it is there i will tell you an example roh substances restriction of hazardous substances <clears throat> earlier when i started my career there are six now there are 10 another four are added lead mercury hexavalent chromium pbb pbde all those things are there so lead carcinogen earlier older times means like another like 10 years background there is something called as unleaded petrol or leaded petrol used to be there correct if anyone remember it right so then people found out lead is the reason for cancer so they removed it but the next question can you solder a circuit board without using lead in the globe across the globe the phones what we are talking the ear pods what we are putting circuit boards are there which contains lead you are not supposed to use it but still you are using it because there is no alternative does it mean we all get cancer yes maybe then why we are using it because regulation says that you can use it but by diluting it or some formulas are there which will come under reach regulation i am going to come over there reach compliance explains compliance since you asked that question let me explain that reach also <coughs> phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 1 compliance should be done by organizations 2008 it started which are producing or consuming or exporting or importing more than 10000 tons of a chemical so all the big petrol chemical companies have registered under reach and all big chemical manufacturers in european union because it is more than 10000 mm, right anyone between 1000 to 10000 <coughs> you register so what do you mean by register when you come to hazardous substances also there is a regulation called as sara act superfund amendments and reauthorization act what does it say of course in hazardous substance we have sara reports also that's why i'm saying i'm not saying only domain i'm saying what is there in the system also we have sara act sara reports are there uh, and i and i think yeah. sara is for us but reach is for europe uh, regulations right total but ultimately the bottom point is same okay this superfund amendments and reauthorization act collects a fund based on the amount of chemicals you are storing and reporting to the authority in case of emergency the clean up should not stop because of non availability of funds immediately
when you purchase a phone iphone in europe is it not costing more why the same phone in thailand or india or even pakistan it costs less but same phone costs more in europe why the reach regulation says that it is not stopping the quantity the cost that is involved for recycling and managing the end damage that will happen because of this chemical i'm charging more it has to dispose the packaging the packaging should be disposed who will dispose it the municipal authorities will dispose there is a cost involved for that we are paying as a consumer the cost for all those things the chemicals we are using so that the government can work properly so you are not getting restricted you are being charged for it depending on the slot you are registered companies pass on the same to the consumers so that's why it is more expensive in some regions less expensive in some regions where regulations are not strict that's a very good question what if i ask me so anyone else Uh, Ram, can I ask what? So you you uh, termed reach. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, we ahead. we are we are very familiar with reach. About uh, the other one, I think ROHS that you said. Both are both are related to the uh, like you said reporting and uh, about the substances depending on what countries you know what is banned where or what is the usage and how they have to report it. Is there any difference between the two? Like why there are two regulations? if we are talking about the similar uh, statements here the <clears throat> the answer lies in your question only <clears throat> some are global regulations some are local regulations okay rohs wwe are global regulations accepted by european union north american latin american asia pacific council reach is something which is related to european union only <clears throat> which is changed by other countries like china they call china reach korea they call it korea reach japan they call it as japan reach us they say my sara is good enough i don't need additional reach okay <clears throat> but when you come to imdg regulation in uh, dangerous goods or rad regulation or iata regulation or rohs or uh, uh, what to say there's uh, wwe these are all a global regulation in respect of whichever region you are there so the same product is reported as per global regulation as per local regulation so we have some some work bench in reach compliance where the compliance status of the product depending on each regulation is captured and reported whether it is a discrete or chemical uh, uh, it would be the same Are we clear? Yeah, yeah, Ram. Thanks. Anyone else has any more doubts? No doubts. That's it. Okay. Any any doubts on GLM or SVT?
come on guys this is an interactive session don't feel shy we are all with your teammates only i am the only one who is outsider fine now let us come to audit management <coughs> <coughs> I'm I'm sorry, guys. My throat and yeah. So, what do you mean by audit management? Can you explain me, anyone? Or what do you mean by audit? Have audit done. Anyone? Hey, anyone, what do you mean yeah. by audit and why we it's need like, to do uh, it? Checking the, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like checking the performance of the entire uh, industry if you take once in a year or uh, a particular duration of time. Okay. Uh, uh, for suppose we take uh, one of the instrument that is uh, used in the manufacturing of something else, but has one call of land. So what is the uh, manufacturing date of that uh, uh, instrument and how many years it has been used to what is the main regular maintenance, it, how it is used and uh, so uh, is there any regular regular maintenance or else if any maintenance is, is missed out for that reason, so there is any damage. So if it, if it is damaged, how it is cost. So like that, is, is there any need to uh, repair that or we, we need to uh, exchange the complete instrument. So like the, like, like in this way. So it, uh, every year in the industry, there will be an audit going. So, so it's like an example I used to set. Got to add a point for this statements? Okay. Yeah. See, every organization, when we are performing, there should be someone who monitors our performance is proper or not, as per the laws or not. So there are audits which will happen, which are both planned and unplanned. When you say planned audit, <coughs> when you say planned audit, this audit is going to happen as per the schedule, like monthly audit quarterly audit, half yearly audit or annual audit, in respect of the department. It can be EHS audit where they will come, they will see all the records, reports. One system is there, people need not look the manual reports, they will execute the reports from the SAP system and they will check it for certain questions, parameters. Site audit, they will go into the site and EHS practices are being performed well or not, they will check in the site. It can be HR audit, finance audit, Fire and safety audit can be anything. So audit management is a common repository in respect of the module for happening. Clear? There are only two transactions in audit management. Most simple model, I will say PLMD underscore audit. That is everything is there. You have an audit plan, you have an audit, you have uh, questions, you have correct to prevent action. You have valuation, whether the audit is passed successful or failure. Then only you can create multiple scenarios, multiple workflows, multiple uh, text types. All those things are possible to be created. So since our department EHS is called as HSCQ or QHSC in most of the companies, it talks about quality, health, safety, environment. So quality means we are talking about audits. That is the reason as a EHS consultant, it is always good to learn about audit management also, how they will be handled for us to be a complete consultant. Any doubts on this? Yes, this is what we'll be learning. 
some of the topics which cannot be shown on the system due to lack of whatever the resources so i'll be explaining to you in theory just like how we discussed reach i'll be explaining in details of theory when we come to the respect to modules time slots remaining all will be shown in the system this is the way i would like to take starting with industrial hygiene and safety occupational health dangerous goods management hazardous substance or hazardous and dangerous goods management then come to product safety which includes your label management substance volume tracking reporting at a single point i will take it when i am doing the product safety not at every module because once if i say it's like again a recap of all the modules so i would like to do it in the time of product safety and finally after we complete our ehs i'll go for this audit management module and close the training session so please uh, now we understood a bit more about it so this is the way i'm going to approach it okay okay friends yes sir great so that is it from my end for the starting day because i want to show the system from tomorrow where we start from industrial hygiene and safety today is only about introduction making you aware of what are the topics a bit of interaction that's all so you can ask me any questions before we wind up this session are we good yes ma'am i think we are good we are done i think we can uh, means if no questions are there because see my my structure in this training is that i have some time available for questions also so if you don't ask questions from me then unnecessarily we are wasting that time <clears throat> I think uh, Ram, we are good for today. Great. Then uh, okay, guys, we will meet up tomorrow. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.